morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, online family. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open us up in prayer before I start this morning. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you for everything that we have seen so far, God. Lord, for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, God. Lord, we declare and decree that we are yours. We belong to you, God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, Lord, that you sit high, God. Lord, that you look upon us, dear Father. Lord, that you have a plan and a purpose for us, dear God. Lord, that nothing can stop, block, or hinder in Jesus' name. I bind up every work of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. I bind up every word curse spoken over this service, every word curse spoken over New Beginnings Discipleship Ministries and those connected right now in Jesus' name, it falls void to the ground, never manifested or come to pass, cursed and destroyed at the root right now in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree that we are covered by the blood, the blood of Jesus cover us and the enemy cannot penetrate in Jesus' name. I bind up every work, every diabolical plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus, every snare is exposed in the name of Jesus because of the light of Jesus Christ within us exposes every dark work of the enemy right now in Jesus name Satan you are bound I bind all witchcraft hoodoo voodoo curses word curses all hexes and vexes anything that would try to come against us is bound and broken now in Jesus name Now, Lord God, I loose a spirit of love, God. I loose a spirit of forgiveness upon us. I loose a spirit of wisdom and knowledge, a fear of the Lord right now in Jesus' name. I loose that upon those watching right now in the hear my voice in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit. God, just have your way in this place. Lord, I decrease as you may increase in me, God. I avail myself, Father, as your servant. Meet for your use, God. Remove me completely, Father. Work through me. Speak through me, God, in Jesus' name. I thank you for it. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my scripture for today is coming from Matthew verse 16, and I'm going to read 15 through 19. Am I really loud? I feel loud. (laughs) Okay. All right. Matthew 16, 15 through 19, and the New King James, and it reads, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered to him and said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And my teaching for today is becoming, walking in your authority. Yes. Amen. Now, in this account, the transaction between Jesus and Peter, Peter had received the revelation of who Jesus is. Jesus said that he did not receive this revelation from flesh and blood, but from his Father who is in heaven. That this is not something that would be known by earthly knowledge. It was a revelation. That could only come from heavenly wisdom. The revelation was about Jesus' spiritual position in the kingdom as Christ, the son of the living God. This is who Jesus truly is. Not from an earthly understanding, but from a spiritual perspective. Now, I am so much more than what you see physically. Amen. It is true that I am 50 years old, which sounds so weird, but I am a 50-year-old wife, sister, friend, and follower of Jesus Christ. But the spirit realm sees me different. The spirit realm sees me as a prophet of God, as a king, as a Lord, under the most high king, Jesus Christ, a guardian of the kingdom. 
Unfortunately, there are several individuals in the body of Christ that have an identity crisis. They do not know who they truly are. Not from a temporary or earthly perspective, but from an eternal spiritual perspective. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 tells us that what we see physically is temporary. It says, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary and subject to change, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The identity crisis comes when we look for our identity from an earthly perspective. Those things that can be seen earthly are temporary and subject to change, amen? Some define themselves by their occupation, what they do. This causes a lot of issues if they lose their job or if they get into a situation where they can no longer perform their job. Some define themselves as their family, their family title, mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle. Others define themselves by what they have or what, by what they don't have. Defining themselves as rich or poor, as having an abundance or being in lack. Remember that Jesus said to the Laodiceans in Revelations 3, 15 through 17, they were the lukewarm church and they defined themselves as rich and wealthy. It reads, I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. Do you not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked? They have become so independent they said, I have need of nothing. It is not a sign of strength to be spiritually independent. They relied on what they had, and they found their refuge in their belongings. What they didn't realize, that what is seen is temporary, and it's subject to change. We cannot put too much stock in earthly belongings. Things can change so quickly. The only thing that is guaranteed not to change is God. Hebrews 8 and 13 tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The Laodiceans were not looking at the eternal treasures, but the current earthly treasures. Matthew 6, 19 through 20 says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. We are not to be independent from God, amen? amen. Finding our true selves, who we are spiritually, eternally, is found in God and in God alone. Jesus said that he is the vine and we are the branches. In John 15, five through six, it reads, I am the vine, you are the branches. Who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them to throw them into the fire and they are burned. When a branch is cut off from the vine, there is no more nutrients or water supplied to it, which sustained its life has been removed. Do not disconnect yourself from God. Amen. We need to stay connected to God to know who we are, our true identity and authority that is supplied to us from him. Our earthly authority or status does not determine our spiritual authority or status. The kingdom of God is not of this world. 
Jesus answered Pilate in John 18, 6, or excuse me, John 18, 36 through 37, when he asked Jesus if he was the king of the Jews. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate answered and said to him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you said rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born and for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is hears the truth hears my voice. Jesus was born for the kingdom. He is the most high king. He is the king of kings, which means there's kings under him, right? Amen. And we are those kings under him. Revelations 5 and 10 tells us, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign where? On the earth, amen. Not when we get to heaven, but here and now on the earth, we shall reign. We are called to reign as well as when the new heavens and the new earth come down. I love this scripture. When we pass away and go to heaven, we're not going to stay there forever, right? There's a new heaven and a new earth that's going to come down and we're going to reign on this earth with God. And I'm going to look at that in Revelation 2, 1 through 4. And it says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Amen. We are called to reign as kings in, in, in the kingdom, even before the new heaven and the new earth come down. We can enter into the kingdom through um, through us, amen, because the kingdom of God is within us. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. John 15 and 19 tells us that the world hates us because we are not of this world. If you were of this world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of this world, but I chose you out of this world, therefore the world hates you. It's okay if you don't fit in this world, amen? We are not supposed to fit in this world. We are not supposed to fit. God calls us unique. He calls us peculiar people. First Peter 2 and 9 says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The definition of peculiar is strange, odd, or unusual. Does that describe any of you? <laughs> Amen. If you have ever felt like that, then you belong to God. God himself says that we are peculiar. And a lot of times, in order to fit in the world, we have to conform or compromise. Romans 12 and 2 tells us not to conform, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind, yes. that we may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God wants you to know that you fit with him. Amen. Even if you don't feel like you fit anywhere else, you fit with him, and he has a place for you. Amen. We have access to the kingdom because the kingdom of God is within us. If you've been in Bible study, this uh, will sound very familiar. Luke 17, 21. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom is within us. And the authority that we have in the kingdom is given according to the level of revelation that we have received. 
we read about Peter, he had a revelation of who Jesus is. A revelation that could have only come from God the Father in heaven. And after he received the revelation, he was given keys to the kingdom, which represent access and authority. With that authority, we are able to bind and loose on earth, and it will be bound and loosed in the heavens. Now, it is important for that binding and loosing to be done in the heavens as it's done on earth, because our battle is not against flesh and blood on this earth, but our battle is happening in the spiritual realm. As spoken in Ephesians 6, 10 and through 15, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against all the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. When we declare from the earth realm with authority, the spirit realm is impacted. There is an action that takes place in the spirit realm when we speak with authority from the earth realm. We are physically on this earth, but we have access to be seated in heavenly places with all things under our feet. Ephesians 2 and 6 tells us that. And hath raised us up together to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And if we catch that revelation that we are spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. This body is our earth suit. It houses our spirit while we are on this earth. But there is so much more to our new creation spirit because it is our spirit that's connected with God, filled with the Holy Spirit. It allows us to be seated with God in heavenly places. God is not bound by time or space, so catching the revelation that we are connected with God and he is not bound, that means we are not bound either. Amen. We are able to declare and decree from our position in Christ in heavenly places. Apostle is a teaching the intercessors that when we receive a revelation from God, that we need to start declaring and decreeing into it in order to bring it to pass. When God gives us revelation, it's a glance. It's an insight for what his will is, what his desire is. God gives us a revelation for a purpose. It's not just to wow us, amen. It's for a reason. The revelation comes from God in heaven, from the spirit realm. And our job is to bring it down from the spirit realm to the physical realm. It will not benefit us if it just uh, stays up in the spirit realm. We need to bring it down into the physical realm. And we bring it down by declaring and decreeing that our faith comes in alignment and agreement with it that we believe it. When God shows you something or speaks a word to you, you have a, a responsibility That's to right. prophesy into the thing. It's a responsibility to hold on to it, to bring it about. Apostle says to bring it from revelation to manifestation. Now, Jesus spoke about the kingdom in parables. This was to teach us to hear and see beyond what is actually happening on the surface level. We are to look into what's happening in the spirit realm to truly understand what is going on. Matthew 3, excuse me, Matthew 13, 10 through 11 in the New King James Version says, And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak in parables? And he answered to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but not to them. To understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, we need to be able to see past the physical and look into the spiritual meanings. We are able to see and hear by revelation, to see and hear beyond our physical senses, to see what's happening in the spiritual realm. To understand the kingdom, to live in the kingdom, to impact the kingdom. Amen. A kingdom is defined by rulership. It has nothing to do with borders. It has everything to do with rulership. 
where the rulership of Jesus Christ is established, the kingdom of God has come. When Jesus was on this earth, whenever he encountered works of darkness, he destroyed it. We are to do the same. Where there is a trace or residue of the enemy's works, anything that did not align with the kingdom, he brought it back into order to be in alignment with the kingdom. When he saw the sick, he knew sickness was not a part of the kingdom. He healed the sick. When he came across those that were oppressed, he knew that oppression had nothing to do with the kingdom. He delivered those that were oppressed. Whenever he saw the works of the enemy, darkness, he brought the light of the kingdom. We are to do the same. Ephesians 5, 10 through 14 tells us, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the fruitful, unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful to even speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things are exposed, are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I repeat the word of God right now. Awake, awake those that are sleeping. Arise and shine and take the light of Christ. Evacuate the darkness by shining the light of the kingdom, by healing the sick, delivering those oppressed. Yes. Walking and knowing your identity in the kingdom. Receiving revelation and then doing something with it. it. Declare it. Decree it. Believe it. Fight for it. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Preaching. Amen. Remember that Jesus came to manifest the kingdom. The church is not a getaway from darkness. It is not a place to come in order to get away from all the bad things that are happening out there in the world. The church is to strengthen us, to train us, so that we can go out and unlock the kingdom of God on this earth, to destroy the works of darkness with the authority that's been given to us. Remember that we're not just citizens of the kingdom, yes. but we are kings in the kingdom. And what do kings do? Kings rule, amen? When we are new in our faith and new in the kingdom, it's important for us to act on the instruction given directly from God. We are learning in Bible study how to hear his voice so that we're able to know the instructions for our lives as well as for our sphere of influence or rulership. Amen. Our sphere of influence is where we rule. As we grow, we move into a level where we start to get more of an understanding of God's will. We understand his will because we're in his word. We weigh our options and situations, and the Lord will lead us on the right path. And we go to him to seek strategies, to be effective in our actions. Again, we need to hear his voice. One of the things that we're doing on the intercessory prayer line is praying in tongues. Yes. It's effective to bring strategies. And even if you're not on the prayer line, I encourage you, if you have the ability to speak in tongues, to speak in tongues. Because you are praying a mystery to God. Yes. A God will reveal those things that he is speaking. As our new creation spirit comes and communes directly with the throne. There is no second heaven interference when we are speaking in tongues. Because the enemy cannot decipher what we're saying. So being able to speak directly to the throne. Now remember, there's a difference between anointing and rank in the spirit. The spirit realm is aware of rank. The spirit realm is aware of the level of authority that we walk in. Amen. Now I'm going to close out with a scripture as we prepare for the dedication. The scripture that I'm going to read at the end here is Matthew 8, 1 through 4, reminding us that humility is essential in the kingdom. Matthew 8, 18, 1 through 4, and it reads, At that time the disciples came to Jesus and said, Who then is greatest 
in the kingdom of heaven. And he called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter into the kingdom of heaven. There's, therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Amen.